Articulate has launched its new emphasis animations in its latest update. So of course, when I saw that this was available, um, I knew that I had to jump on and have a go. Um, and I find this really exciting, actually. It's something that I think a lot of us have wanted for a while. Um, obviously, I would still love my more of transition, but um, I think I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer for that. Now, I've already seen some really amazing examples of people using these animations um, to create flashcards, um, to add into activities like making a plant grow and things like that. Um, some really awesome ideas already. And I'm sure in the coming kind of days and weeks, we're going to see um, some really great ways that people have used these new animations. So mine's probably a little bit more boring. Um, I've gone for buttons and using these emphasis animations to show when a button is available. So let me um, open the slide and we will take a look at how this works. Okay, so really basic slide here. Now you can see we've got my next button in the bottom right corner. And if I hover my mouse over it and click, you can see that it teeters. So it's telling me that it's locked. And if I keep clicking, it'll repeat that animation. So I need to click on this info icon first. And if I hover my mouse over the info icon, it grows, indicating that it's something that should be clicked on. So if I click on that one, you'll then notice in the bottom right, my next button pulsed and is now unlocked. And if I hover my mouse over it, it grows and shrinks. So I'll just repeat that again. Keep an eye on this next button here when I click this info button. There we go. You can see it pulses and indicates that this slide is now unlocked and the learner can progress forward. So this is just a really nice, simple way of indicating to learners when they can move forward or drawing attention to buttons or interactive elements of a slide. So if I close preview and we'll have a look at how I set this up. So the first thing to note here is that you can't add emphasis animations to states. So if I just create a new slide and I'll demonstrate this, if I just shove in a shape for now. Now, if I wanted to add a um, grow and shrink animation, for example, to this a hover state of this rectangle. So if I add in a hover state, and let's just, copy this rectangle and paste it onto here. If I go into animations, you can see that you're actually not allowed to add animations, emphasis animations, sorry, to states. So you can add the usual ones like fade, wipe, all of that kind of stuff. So that's the first thing to note with this. Um, so I wouldn't recommend maybe adding emphasis animations to every single next and previous button in your uh, course unless you're going to put these in the master if you've got very simple navigation. So next slide, next slide, next slide, and you don't branch off or anything like that. Let's very quickly go over how I put this slide together and added the emphasis animations. So at the moment we have five emphasis animations available, pulse, grow, shrink, shake, and teeter. And for this um, slide, I've used the teeter, pulse, and grow animations. So before we get into the triggers, I'm just going to talk a little bit about states. Now, I've already said that you can add emphasis animations to states. Um, but another thing to note with this is that usually when you're having locked navigation buttons, you would use a disabled state, um, which would stop any triggers firing and stop the learner from being able to move forward. With this um, particular animation, so having the teeter animation when the learner clicks it, if you had your button set as disabled, this animation wouldn't play um, because disabled state stops any animations, any triggers, anything related to that button working. So what I had to do was create a separate locked state um, that allowed me to then, as we can see up here, apply an animation to it. And my normal state is obviously the unlocked padlock with the yellow button. Now, we already know we can't apply emphasis animations within states. So what we've had to do is do it on the trigger panel instead. So if I click on my button and it will highlight the triggers I've used. So the first one we've got is when the state of our next button is normal, 
we're going to emphasize the button using the pulse animation. And what this will do is when the button turns from being locked to normal, it's going to pulse, indicating that a change has happened and that slide is now unlocked. The next ones we've got are when the user clicks the next button, we're going to emphasize it by using the teeter animation if the state of the next button is locked. So if it is locked, it's going to teeter back and forth um, to show that it's locked. The learner can jump to the next slide if the state of the button is normal. So whilst the button is set to locked, the learner won't be able to progress forward. The button has to be set as normal to allow it to move forward. When the learner hovers over the next button, it's going to be emphasized by growing. Um, and this I've got to set to fire only if the next button is normal. So I didn't want this happening when the button was locked um, because I wanted to emphasize that teeter animation. So the button will only grow when it's hovered over if the button, state of it is normal and indicating again that it's unlocked and you can use it. So that's the first set of triggers. The second set um, we've got are around this info button. So when the state of this info button is visited, so when the learner has clicked on it, that is what is going to tell this button to change from locked to unlocked. So that's the trigger that is then going to fire off the other emphasis animations, the, um, the growing animation and the pulse animation. And of course, we've got when the learner hovers over here, this um, info button is going to grow, indicating the learner should click on it. So it sounds a bit complicated, but the actual triggers themselves are really simple. It's just working with the states um, to tell the button when it needs to animate at certain points, depending on other things happening. So this sort of level of triggers needed is one of the reasons why I wouldn't really recommend doing this for every single slide. You wouldn't want this level of triggers um, on every slide just for one button, really. But um, it is quite nice where you have slides where something needs to be done before the learner should progress. And you can still have maybe the hover button, the hover animation, sorry, on each of your next buttons because that's only one trigger. Um, and if it was, obviously, if we could input it into the states, then we wouldn't have all of this. So that's a bit of a pain, but um, it's a nice effect for when you do have locked slides. So let's just preview it again to remind ourselves what it looks like. OK, so if we click on our next button at the moment, it teeters back and forth because it's locked and it won't let us move forward. We hover over our info button and it grows, indicating we should click on it. It then switches to visited and our next button pulses and um, unlocks. And then if we hover over, you can see it grows and shrinks, indicating that it's something we should click on. So I'll just replay it one more time. So just keep an eye on this next button here. Click it and it teeters. So click on the info button and it grows and shrinks, um, indicating it's ready for the learner to move on. And there we go. Nice, simple, um, but quite effective way of using the emphasis animations. Um, and I'd love to see what everybody else comes up with. So do um, share them. I think there's going to be some really, really great examples of using these animations. And fingers crossed, Articulate adds more um, in the coming updates as well.